In West Africa, we also have the Sapai. From 1490 to 1540, these are people living on the coast of Sierra Leone who created art for trade primarily with the Portuguese as well as for themselves. And the piece we're looking at is the master of the symbolic execution. Impressive title. Now, Portuguese commissions were generally elaborate containers and utensils. And in this case, this is basically a souvenir. You see, what's happening here is the Portuguese sailors, of course, are sailing around Africa to India and Asia. And you don't want to talk about the trip that was completely mundane. You don't want to come home and go, yeah, it was nice. Nothing really happened. Uh, you know, perfectly safe and everything else. No, you want to show that something really impressive might have happened. So you're going to come up with these exotic stories and you have a souvenir like the salt cellar, which is going to back that up. And by the way, I said salt cellar. Salt cellars are particularly popular in Europe at the time, throughout much of human history, really, uh, really up to the last hundred years. And that's because salt was particularly expensive. So you would create containers for them that were particularly elaborate, just like the one we see here. So this piece would be a prestige item. And it's the sort of thing that, you know, a sailor might pick up for near nothing on one of these trade missions and bring back and be able to talk about how savage and dangerous this place was. This is carved of elephant tusk and it's about 17 inches high. So it's actually quite massive and is by one of three active ivory carvers at the time. What we see at the top is an execution scene. We see someone with their head bent over. We see other heads sitting there, some perhaps a little too content given their situation. And beneath that, that sphere that these are sitting on, that holds the salt. And beneath it, uh, along this line, I'll bring up my pen, Along the line right here, that is where this opens. And here we would have the salt and actually a fairly decent size. So this must have gone to someone who either was just showing off or maybe was wealthy enough to have a large quantity of salt. The base is made of rods, which are adorned with crocodile images. So these uh, pieces here are stylized crocodiles. Uh, between the figures and here. And then we have human figures of both sexes. The men are dressed as European, and we see the odd hat here that sort of stands out and tells us that he's European. And the women are dressed as native, uh, as African. And we get that idea from their chest because they actually have scarification on their chests, a form of beautification very common in West Africa. So the European clothing shows the European influence in Africa. The African women showing a sense of exoticism. And when you look at it, the figures look very cartoonish. So the heads specifically uh, are unusually large. Why is that? Well, in most African societies, especially West African societies, those heads are large because they're supposed to show wisdom. And this was the most important trait that someone could have, whether you're a ruler or a commoner. So they would often exemplify this by enlarging the head. They also sometimes do it for identification. And for those reasons, it just comes into the visual language and becomes an element of the society. The subject matter uh, is unclear in terms of who might have actually requested this, who the original commissioner was, but it does speak to 16th century artistic interaction, just like the canteen with scenes from the life of Christ that we saw in Islam, where we have Europeans and Africans here working together to create a piece that's mutually beneficial for both. The African artisan gets paid European currency or valuable trade goods, the Europeans get a valuable piece that they can take back and show off on their dining room table. The impact on Euro of Europe on Africa will become far more pronounced as we move forward 
into the 19th and 20th centuries.